The built MasterCard has been gassed up to a questionable point since its release in 2021, and this card has garnered so much hype that you may feel dumb for not applying for it. However, have we really taken a big step back and asked if this card is really worth it? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do here today, and we're going to get really in-depth, so just sit back, relax, and enjoy this one. This video will be broken down into three main parts. Part one is going to be about the pros of the built MasterCard. Part two will be about the cons. And then part three is going to be my final verdict on this card based on my personal situation. By the end of this one, I hope you'll have a more well-rounded view about this credit card. That way you can decide whether or not you do actually want to apply for it or whether you should be, you know, keeping or canceling it in years to come. And if you don't have this card, but do decide to apply by the end of this video, it would mean a ton to me if you could use the link down in my description to do so. Of course, as long as you don't have a friend or family member with a link to give you for the card. So thank you for doing that if you do. Now let's get into part one, the pros. So the first pro about this card is the annual fee. And the reason it's a pro is because the annual fee is $0. There is no annual fee on this credit card. And as you'll see, as we dive into more of the benefits on this card, the fact that you can get everything you can from it completely for free is honestly pretty impressive. Next up are the earning categories. Just so you don't have to go look this up yourself, this card is going to give you 3X back on dining, 2X back on travel, 1X back on rent without the transaction fee, which is the key fact there, and 1X on everything else. You also do have some extra earning earning potential when it comes to the built neighborhood features. You can also get up to 10x back on dining and up to 10x back on built fitness classes and stuff like that, as well as 2x bonus points on Lyft whenever you link your built and Lyft accounts together. So the earning categories sound great, but do note that in order to actually get these points in your account, you will have to use the card five times within each statement period. And we're going to talk more about this in part two. So it seems like the 3x back on dining and 2x back on travel is a direct jab at the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which has a $95 annual fee. While of course, Course, the built MasterCard has none. I actually find myself using the built card for dining a lot personally, particularly because of that fact that I have to use this card at least five times every statement period. However, of course, most people are going to be getting this card because of that 1x back on rent that you get, again, without the transaction fee, because no other credit card on the market gives you this. And on that note, I want to mention that basically, no matter what rental property you live at, you should be able to benefit from that 1x category. And that is for one, because built is going to give you a bank account and a routing number to use through your rental portal. But if they for some reason don't accept that, you can also have them send a check on your behalf. So theoretically, you should be able to utilize this card for what it's intended for. Like I said, though, this 1x back on the rent category really does put this card in a category of its own because there's no other card that competes with it on that front. And this is a big reason as to why I think a lot of us feel like we need this credit card. But I do want to push back a lot more on that in part two. So stay tuned. I also want to mention here that 1x back on rent, while that is nice, that doesn't cover everybody that, you know, is paying for housing, but they have made a lot of big strides this year in actually adding mortgages to this as well as student housing from what I've read. So that is really exciting and hopefully will actually come to fruition pretty soon. So the next pro I want to talk about are going to be their transfer partners. It's pretty well known at this point that Built has one, if not the highest quality list of transfer partners available on the entire credit card market. Just to name a few of the high power ones, we have Hyatt on the hotel side, American Airlines on the domestic airline side, as well as international airline partners like Air Canada, Air France, etc. Now, let's not forget that for one, Hyatt is only accessible right now through Chase and Built, and the value of Hyatt's points are the highest among any hotel brand in the US. And on top of that, Built is the only lender that has American Airlines as a direct transfer partner, and American Airlines' points are also among the highest valued of the domestic airline side of things. The international airline partners are great as well, especially when you consider the fact that all of the other big lenders out there have access to a lot of the same international airline partners, making it to where you can effectively combine your Built points with with other lenders currencies out there like Chase Ultimate Rewards or Amex Membership Rewards, for example, through those international airline partners, making built points, again, extremely valuable. Even just having access to these partners is great, but let's not forget that they also have massive transfer bonuses to at least one of their transfer partners, generally, every single month on rent day. And even for their lowest tier of status, that being blue status, at least as of this year, you still get a 75% transfer bonus to the selected partner or partners that are being targeted for rent day. So that effectively means that if you had, say, 10000 built points. That's the same as having 17,500 built points with that 75% bonus, as long as you do actually use your points during those bonus periods and with the selected partner. So pair all of that with the fact that built transfer partner interface is the best that I've seen in the entire game. And that makes built travel redemptions really hard to beat. Now, let me just go ahead and show y'all what it looks like real quick. So you don't think I'm just making this up. So what I did here is I went ahead and searched for hotels in Austin for next month. And it populates with all the options I have with any of their transfer partners tells me exactly how many points I would need to use with each transfer partner, and then shows me how I can actually make that redemption happen by transferring, say, built points to Hyatt, for example. 
So in my opinion, that is really cool and something that we haven't seen in the past. So they're just making redemptions even easier for you, which I think is a huge plus. While we're talking about redemptions though, I might as well touch on all the other methods you can redeem your built points for. And I also want to tell you which ones to completely avoid because that is most of them. So for one, you can also book travel through their travel portal. And that is at a 1.25 cent per point redemption, which is exactly the same again as the Chase Sapphire Preferred that has a $95 annual fee. So I'd say that that's not a bad option, but I probably wouldn't default to that. With built experiences, you can also get a 1.25 cent per point redemption. And in niche cases, I think that this would work out pretty well. Like for example, this month they have special access tickets to the March Madness NCAA college basketball playoff games. So while you get 1.25 cents per point, those tickets are already, you know, probably heavily discounted and you get extra experiences on top of that. So the redemption is maybe worth more than 1.25 cents per point at the end of the day. Then you have some really bad options like redeeming for rent, for example, that's only going to give you 0.55 cents per point. So definitely never do that. The same thing goes for a statement credit to offset the purchases you've made on the card. You can only get 0.55 cents per point for that as well. So avoid it at all costs. You can also use your points for Amazon purchases, but that is less than one cent per point as well, sitting at 0.7 cents per point. Don't do this either. And the same thing kind of goes for redeeming for fitness classes or through the built collection because you a lot of times won't even get a full one cent per point. One other really niche possibility for using your built points could be towards a down payment because you will get 1.5 cents per point for that. But I've never heard of anybody doing this at this point. And again, you can get a lot more value with their transfer partners. So while it may be a good move for you, I think the majority of people are never going to use their points in that way. So overall, of course, you want to use your points with their transfer partners, and that would give you an average value of probably at least two cents per point, depending on what partners you're using. And then whenever you combine that with the fact that they're giving out, you know, 75 to 150 percent transfer bonuses, you can really get a ton of value for your built points in that way. Now, before we get into the rest of the benefits on this card, let me tell you all about the app that I use to get the most value from every one of my credit cards in my 12 card setup up that of course being Max Rewards. Right off the bat, I do want to mention that yes, Max Rewards is a sponsor of the channel, but yes, I do genuinely use their app on a consistent basis. So take that for what it's worth. For those of y'all that haven't heard of Max Rewards before, it's basically an app that allows you to accumulate all of your data from any of your credit cards into one convenient app. This includes things like your total card balances, total point balances, bill due dates, and more for cards from basically any lender just in one interface. And for those of y'all that have heard of the app, I wanna mention that recently they've made some big improvements to the app that I want to tell you all a little bit more about. So first of all, they've launched additional ways for you to customize your card accounts within the app. So now from the card details page, you can adjust your card type, card rewards program, adjust the rewards multiplier, and even nickname your cards as well. Further than that, they've also released a new Max Rewards Gold feature, being their paid tier of the app, called Card Value. This feature is one that allows you to actually take a deep dive on each one of your cards and see how much value they're really giving you based on your rewards earned, the offers that you've earned from Max Rewards Gold, the credits that you've used and how much value that gives you back and even more to make sure that you're getting positive value from your cards with annual fees on them. And finally, they've also released some new improvements on their connections, specifically with Chase, for example, which as y'all know, has been one that is very hard to sync with in the past, but their team is constantly working on making this better for us. And in recent past, they've had some successful changes to it, which I'm happy to share about. If you even wanna just try out the free features of Max Rewards, please be sure to download it through the link in my description. And whenever you sign up for the app, enter the promo code Spencer, and that'll give you a one month discount off of your annual Max Rewards Gold subscription if you do decide to upgrade. Thank you to Max Rewards for sponsoring this video, but let's get back into the pros of the Built MasterCard. Okay, now I want to spend actually a decent amount of time here talking about Built's status because I think this is a massive pro of the Built MasterCard. So just to give you the quick rundown, Built has four different status tiers you can be a part of, ranging from blue to silver to gold to platinum. And the ways that you qualify for these statuses are going to be either based on qualifying points, which would include basically all Built points that you earn from spending, or the second method would be based on the dollar amount that you've spent on the card. And this is a way to fast track your path to elite status with all eligible non rent spending. This including built dining, lift ride share, built travel portal, and more with any linked debit or credit card. So it doesn't have to be the built MasterCard that you're spending on, but there are specific categories you have to be spending in. I'll go ahead and throw up the requirements for each tier here on screen so you can see that. But as you can tell, the quickest method to get status is going to be by spending in those eligible categories. Okay, so now we can talk about the benefits of having status because that's the important part here. I'm going to show the chart on screen right now so you can see all the different benefits that come with each status tier. I'm going to quickly go over each one of these and talk about why they could be beneficial. So the first thing I want to mention is actually arguably the biggest perk, and it's not even one that's listed on the chart, but that's going to be access to better rent day promotions. So we haven't fully covered what rent day is yet, but it's basically a promotion that Built does on the first of every month, and it allows you the ability to earn double points on all non-rent purchases on top of some kind of extra promotion like a transfer bonus that we talked about earlier, plus maybe even access 
access to a special built experience as well. So to paint the picture for you, in March, they had a cool March Madness style bracket where members were able to basically vote on what benefit they wanted to earn for rent day in March. Plus, they also had that built experience option that I talked about earlier, where you could redeem your points for special March Madness tickets, which is pretty sweet. Plus, of course, you get the same access to double points on all of your non rent purchases for that day, free points from the rent free game show, as well as the ability to get your rent possibly paid for if you're drawn as a winner. They do a points trivia quest and even more. So there are a ton of ways to get value from the built card on rent day specifically. But where does the status come in, you may ask? Well, for one, again, using our example of March's rent day for that March Madness style bracket where we selected the one winner that everybody would get on rent day. If you had gold or platinum status, you also got the runner up benefit as well. So you got to double dip there. And then for the experience promotion, the higher status you had, the earlier you had access to those tickets, which is really nice if you do care to go because people like me with only blue status at the moment are basically just praying that a couple of tickets will stay around that we may be able to scoop up. That's just one example. And like I said, every month these promotions do change. But the fact of the matter is that the higher status you have, the better. Another new benefit of having status is that they've allowed platinum members to match to Air France KLM Flying Blue's gold status. Having that gold status with Flying Blue also earns you Sky Team Elite status, which comes with its own host of benefits. So it's really cool to see them partnering up with their transfer partners in this way. They also have built milestone reward perks that come up in 25,000 point increments where you do not earn elite status. These benefits aren't super game changing by any means. Like you might get a few more points here and there for certain purchases or a boost in points to help you qualify for the next status tier and stuff like that. So nothing crazy, but still nice to have. They also have an interesting feature where you're actually able to earn interest on your unused built points. And this is given to silver, gold and platinum members. So everybody but the lowest. And while this is really cool and we haven't seen this from any other bank, it's honestly not that incentivizing. For example, if you have balance is in like the tens of thousands of points, you may be earning an extra few dozen points in a month, which isn't anything life changing once again. And I'm definitely not somebody to say no to free points, but this is not a reason to hoard all of your built points necessarily. They also have other stuff like a complimentary built collection gift whenever you reach platinum status. They give you bonus points on a new lease or lease renewals, as long as you're anything but blue status once again, plus access to the built home ownership concierge, which again, very niche, but maybe could help some of you. And the bottom line here is that built just has a ton of different benefits that you could probably capitalize on. And the fact of the matter is that chasing status with built can give you some insane value, even when you just consider something like the transfer bonuses. So enough about built status. Let's also talk about just the other additional benefits that this card offers. For example, this card has no foreign conversion fee, which is a plus. It'll give you $5 worth of lift credits. If you take three rides in a calendar month, you get cell phone protection up to $800 worth. You also have purchase security or theft and damage protection, which is up to $10,000 per item within 90 days of purchase and $50,000 total in coverage per year. It gives you a primary auto rental collision damage waiver up to $50,000 and trip cancellation and interruption protection up to $5,000 worth for common carrier costs per traveler per trip. And there are even more benefits on this card. I know you might be like how in the world we've been talking for whatever 20 minutes and you still haven't gotten to any cons, but there is just a lot to get through with this card. So be sure to do your own research on it if you feel like you haven't gotten a full gist of this card yet. So now you may be wondering how the heck is this a well-rounded review of the built master card if you just keep listing off benefits well let's go ahead and dive into part two the cons the first con has to do with the welcome offer and i say that because there is no welcome offer on the built master card granted there is technically a pseudo welcome offer that they seem to be giving everybody where you get 5x back on all of your purchases for the first five days of having the card and i'm pretty sure once again that does not include rent but still i guess at least they give you some kind of bonus for opening it i just don't think that it really ever makes sense to sacrifice a ton of spend for this card bonus when you could be putting that same amount of spend towards a really great welcome offer on like one of the Chase Inc cards, for example, because let's say you put $6,000 on the built master card in the first five days of having it, that would give you what 30,000 points. But if you put that spin towards a new Chase Inc Unlimited or Chase Inc cash welcome offer, you could get 90,000 points for that same amount of spend and transfer to a decent amount of the same partners that built has. The next con is that you do have to use this card five times a month to get the points. Now, this is really just something that's pretty annoying to have to deal with, but not a big reason to completely avoid this card. In reality, using a card five times every month is not that difficult, especially when you set up like one or two subscription services on it. I think personally, I have like my phone bill on it right now. And then whenever you add rent to that, you only have to make what three more purchases in the month to get all of your points, which is not hard to do. Why they have to put this on there, though, I don't really understand besides the fact that they get us to use their card more, which is better for them. So I guess that makes sense on that front. But I think this really only becomes an issue for those that want to get this card and only use it for rent. And specifically, I'm picturing people here with like 20 plus credit cards that 
that each credit card is only really used for maybe one category to then have to put the built MasterCard in your wallet and use it as a daily when you have so many other options to choose from. I think that's where you may sacrifice some value and why this requirement could become pretty annoying. The next con is that it lacks a good cashback option. So whenever you look at companies like Citi and Chase, for example, not only can you redeem through transfer partners at you know a similar average rate of say two cents per point, like you can do with the built MasterCard, but you can also redeem all of your points for cashback at one cent per point, making those cards great hybrid credit cards and more worthwhile for really anybody in the credit card game. If you were to try to redeem your built points for cashback, like we talked about earlier, you're only gonna get 0.55 cents per point, and that's something I would never do. Once again, is this a big deal? No, but if you did not come into this card expecting to only ever use your points for travel, you would likely get pretty annoyed with it. So I guess that'd be my warning to you here is that if you're looking for a cashback or hybrid kind of credit card. This is not it for you. This is a travel focused redemption credit card, at least. But now let's go ahead and get into the biggest con, in my opinion. And for you math nerds, I think you're going to love this section. But that is the opportunity cost of using this card for your rent purchases. The fact of the matter is that housing is everybody's biggest spend category, mostly. And the fact that Built has come into the credit card market and actually given us a way to earn points on that rent without the transaction fee is amazing. But that's not to say that we couldn't use our other credit cards in the past for rent. Yes, you'd have to eat a 3% transaction transaction fee or something close to that. So while it may seem like it would never make sense to do that because no credit card is going to give you more than 3% back on rent, this is where things get interesting. I would agree that it is a bad idea to put your rent purchases on any credit card besides the built MasterCard, except for in one situation. You're spending towards either a new welcome bonus or a retention offer. I say this because yes, while you're paying a 3% transaction fee with a good offer, it's pretty easy to get 10 to 30% back on all of those purchases within that spending requirement for the welcome offer. So take 3% away from that, and you're still doing way better than the flat 1% back that the built MasterCard gives you. This is actually exactly what I did with my Chase Inc. Unlimited. And for those of y'all that saw me apply for that one, you'll know that I applied for the Chase Inc. Unlimited and the built MasterCard on the same day. A big reason I was comfortable with doing that was because the built MasterCard does not have a welcome offer besides that 5x back thing. But again, I didn't really care about that. So I was planning on running all of my spend really through the Chase Inc. Unlimited to hit that $6,000 spending requirement in the first three months of having it. For me, that $6,000 is a bit steep for me to hit that quickly, unless I did prepay for some of my rent using that card. Yes, that means that the months that I prepay for my rent, I will not be able to use the built MasterCard for it. But as you're about to see from the math, I think that was actually the best decision for me and likely honestly for you too. Let's take this to the extreme here and say that I actually prepaid $6,000 worth of my rent on the Chase Income Limited when I opened it. That would have given me 90,000 points for the welcome offer, plus 1.5% back on that $6,000 worth of spend, yielding me 9,000 more points, bringing us to 99,000 points total for that $6,000 worth of spend. Yes, I would have paid that 3% transaction fee on all of that, but that just comes out to $180. And with an average value of two cents per point for my redemptions using Chase, given the points guys valuations here, those 99,000 points I earned would have been worth $1,980. If you subtract out the $180 of transaction fees, that gives me a profit of $1,800 total. Now, if we look at the flip side, if I was to put all that spend on the built card instead, I would have only gotten 6,000 points for that spend. At a two cent per point valuation, once again, that's only worth $120. But we can go even further than that and say that I used the built points that I earned from that during a 75% transfer bonus to one of Built's transfer partners. That effectively makes my 6,000 points 10,500 points whenever I go to redeem with that specific transfer partner. And that would still only be worth $200. $10. So we're talking a difference of just under $1,600 in value by opting to prepay my rent for a bonus compared to using my built MasterCard to pay for it. Yes, I understand that this example is a bit flawed because you can't just consistently prepay your rent all the time unless you had a lot of cash flow or something like that. But there's no denying the fact that you can get a ton of value by using that method rather than the built MasterCard. Again, is this a reason to not get the built MasterCard? I don't think so. But it's really important to analyze your options here, especially for somebody that likes opening a ton of new cards every year. While you may think that the built MasterCard is kind of a set it and forget it for that one rent purchase, for one, you still have to use the card five times in a month, but you're also sacrificing a ton of spend that could be going towards other bonuses. And even though you have to pay that small transaction fee for your rent purchases, that would just be a drop in the bucket compared to how much value you're getting for those bonuses. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and dive into part three, my final verdict. At this point, I think you'll have a very good understanding of how I feel about this card. And in reality, it's just a card in a category of its own. Not only does it offer points on rent with no transaction fee, but they change the game every single month with their rent day promotions and make the whole credit card experience way more interactive than any other company has done so far. They are genuinely changing the credit card game. And I don't say that willy nilly, like I genuinely mean that. 
If you're a renter, I still do think that this card is very worth it. And it's honestly even worth adding this to your roadmap if you're not a renter at this point, considering their strides they're making in that regard this year. However, I will say that this card is honestly a bit lackluster if you're not going to use the benefits and promotions that come with it. As we just discussed, getting 1x back on your rent purchases is not a necessity by any means, especially if you're somebody that's constantly spinning towards those new welcome offers. But all of the other benefits that this card offers, including you know the status perks that we were talking about, make it to where you can still get a ton of value from this card regardless of what you put on it. I also honestly don't think you're going to have a better experience in redeeming your points for travel than with the Build Master card. So even that alone is a big reason that I'm loving the card right now, even though I'm not currently putting rent on it. And don't forget, this card has no annual fee, so it's not going to be doing any harm to your setup. It's really only going to be doing you good. The question is, how much good? Now, I'm sure that a lot of y'all wonder if this card is worth a Chase 524 slot, and I honestly can't say because I don't know your specific situation, but I'd say it very well could be if you use it for its intended purposes. I hope that given all of this information, you can make an educated decision for yourself about whether or not this card is worth it. And if you do end up wanting to apply for it, once again, I have links down below for you to do so and support me at no additional cost to you. So thank you for doing that. If you do want to see me apply for this card live or also unbox it and talk more about it, be sure to click into one of these videos next. And as always, Odin and I both want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. And we'll catch you guys next time.